With just four weeks to go until the pivotal midterm elections and early voting about to start in some crucial states, Republicans and Democrats have settled on very different strategies. Republicans in key battleground races will determine control of Congress have decided to fully embrace Donald Trump, even as the federal criminal investigation into his stolen classified documents intensifies. President Biden, meanwhile, is taking the first steps towards decriminalizing marijuana. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. As much as we may all want him to disappear into the sunset, Donald Trump is still very much playing a central role in Republican politics, and specifically, the GOP's campaign to take back control of Congress. Just this weekend, he traveled to Nevada and Arizona, two crucial battleground states with tight races for both governor and Senate. And yet, even though Trump is theoretically supposed to be there to campaign for other candidates, he always, without exception, makes it about himself. He's like the best man at a wedding who gives a drunken toast about how awesome he is. I remember when Jake came up to me sophomore year, big guy, strong guy, tears, tears pouring down his face, and he said to me, he told me he just met Sarah, and he needed advice from me because I'll, I was the smartest and sexiest guy I knew. <laughs> and I told him, I told him these exact words. He'll remember it. I told him. He'll remember I said, if you love her, you gotta get a ring and lock her up. For example, <laughs> Trump was in Nevada on Saturday to campaign with the GOP candidates for Senate and Governor Adam Laxalt and Joe Lombardo, who both got up to speak. After Lombardo's remarks, he could be heard asking Trump if he should stay up on stage with him. And I want you to guess Trump's response. Thank you, sir. Thank you, 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 didn't pick Lombardo up over his head and throw him off the stage WWE style. Also, I love how sheepishly he asked Trump if he should stay up there with him. He's like an actor asking a table of producers if he can audition a second time. Do you, um, <clears throat> do you want me to do that line again? Uh, no, you can uh, just get the f on out of here. <laughs> and you can actually uh, take uh, the headshot. And then... <laughs> On Sunday, Trump went to Arizona, ostensibly to campaign with Blake Masters and Carrie Lake, the GOP candidates for Senate and governor. But again, he could not help but rant about his own problems, including the federal criminal investigation into the classified documents he stole from the White House. Now, any normal person in that situation might stay out of the spotlight, or at the very least, avoid talking about the case in public. But Trump, as we all know, is not normal. And during that rally in Arizona, Trump decided just essentially to confess. I had a small number of boxes in storage at Mar-a-Lago guarded by Secret Service and my people and everybody. I mean, it's safe. There is no crime. You know, there is no crime. It's not a crime. And they should give me immediately back everything that they've taken from me, because it's mine. It's mine. They took it from me in the raid. They broke into my house. The key quote there is when he says, it's mine. That shows you it wasn't just some misunderstanding. He didn't take the classified documents by accident. He took them on purpose because he thinks they belong to him. And when you're proving a crime, criminal intent is key. I know that because I watch a show called Law & Order Criminal Intent. It's right there in the title. <laughs> there was never a Law & Order spinoff called Law & Order Oops My Bad. <laughs> and then Trump decided to reel off a truly insane story about what other presidents had done with their own presidential records. George H.W. Bush took millions of documents to a former bowling alley and a former Chinese restaurant where they combined them, so they're in a bowling alley slash Chinese restaurant. <laughs> now, usually this would be the part of a closer look where I carefully dissect that insanity, but instead, I want to see what it would feel like to actually believe him. Which brings us to a new segment called Seth Takes Donald Trump at His Word. <laughs> you know what? When you tell me George H.W. Bush took millions of documents to a bowling alley slash Chinese restaurant, I believe you. I believe you, because I don't think you'd ever make something up like that. And here's how I believe it happened. George H.W. Bush was leaving office and packed up millions of documents, loaded them into what was probably multiple trucks, and then his family came out and said, whoa, dad, what are you doing? And he said, I'm in a super bad mood. 
about only serving one term, get out of my way. And they said, you can't just take all these documents. And he said, uh, not only am I taking them, I am taking them to a bowling alley slash Chinese restaurant <laughs> where I intend to spend my retirement picking up spares, knocking down wontons, and reading state secrets at my leisure. <laughs> and if you think I'm turning these trucks around, let me assure you, I'm not gonna do it. At which point, Barbara turned to her kids and she said, you know what, just I'll let them go. And that is why, <laughs> to this day, if you're in Texas, you can stop by HW's Walk and Bowl and Top Secret <laughs> Document Warehouse. This has been <laughs> Seth Takes Donald Trump at His Word. <laughs> Gotta say, you guys, it's pretty fun. <laughs> I highly, I can see why people at his rallies are having such a good time. Again, I want to emphasize, these aren't obscure appearances we have to go digging for. These are rallies Trump is holding with GOP candidates in key battleground states to win back control of Congress. He thinks he's actually helping those candidates. Biden, meanwhile, is taking an entirely different approach, doing things people like. For example, polls have repeatedly shown that voters overwhelmingly say marijuana should be legal for medical and recreational use. And last week, Biden took an important first step toward decriminalizing marijuana. President Biden is taking his first major steps toward decriminalizing marijuana. Today, he pardoned thousands of Americans convicted on federal possession charges, simple possession cases dating back to the 1990s. That clears about 6,500 people convicted between 1992 and 2021. And he is also urging governors to pardon those convicted of state charges, which make up for the vast majority of convictions. The president is also ordering his administration to review how marijuana is classified, saying that it makes no sense that it is a schedule one drug in the same class as heroin and LSD. You know, Biden always had that vibe of a grandpa who, if he caught you smoking weed, would scold you and then take a long hit <laughs> before telling you he spent a summer as a roadie for Grand Funk Railroad. This is obviously huge news and a long overdue first step toward criminal justice reform and undoing the racist and disproportionate impacts of our deeply inhumane drug laws. No one should be in jail for something you can buy at a boutique in Beverly Hills. There are states in this country where you can find a high-end weed dispensary with all kinds of fancy edibles in a strip mall right next to a bowling alley slash Chinese restaurant. But on top of being the right thing to do, it might also explain a lot because there have been times when Biden has gotten stuck on stage in a way that make me think he might have just taken a giant bong rip and the weed is just starting to kick in. Whoa! Can anyone, like, see me? Am I... Did I turn into a statue? <laughs> and then there's this moment from Thursday where, for some reason, Biden just started silently backing away from reporters once he decided he didn't want to answer any more questions. <laughs> No, the, the, the trip was not essentially for oil. The trip was about the Middle East and about Israel and, and rationalization of positions. But so it is a disappointment, and it says that there are problems. Are you worried about it? What is he doing? Is he, is he trying to do the Homer Simpson meme? You can't, you can't disappear. You're on camera in front of the most famous building in the world. We, we can all see you. It's like trying to Irish goodbye a meeting in your own office. So those are the quarterly sales reports, a little bit lower than we expected. And now before I answer what I assume will be some very angry shareholder questions, I'm just gonna head to the bathroom and I will be right back. <laughs> and I'll just wait here until they're gone. <laughs> and then after, I guess, attempting to moonwalk away from reporters, Biden <laughs> made this unfortunate gaffe at a manufacturing event on Friday. Let me start off with two words. Made in America. <laughs> Made in America. Greatest band ever. <laughs> two words. Grand Funk Railroad. <laughs> now, even though this news was both hugely popular and a big step toward a fair and more sane drug policy. It won't surprise you to learn that not everyone was pleased. Specifically, Fox News had some issues, although I'm not sure they all made sense. Joe is rolling out a political Hail Mary, and today, one year after firing or suspending dozens of White House staffers for past marijuana use, well, Biden announced a widespread pardon 
to anybody convicted of marijuana possession of the on the federal level. Well, it starts with marijuana, but where does it go from there? I think it's so cynical because the question of the impact of drugs on our kids and our societies is immense. Now, I want to describe the left's midterm agenda very simply. Are you ready? This is what they're going to give you more of if you elect them. Abortion, pot, porn, and more January 6th hearings. Damn. Sounds awesome. Just add in a bowling alley slash Chinese restaurant. <laughs> feel like that's a great night out. It's so funny how right-wing pundits always have this way of making Democrats sound better than they actually are. Also, where did the porn thing come from? Did they just... <laughs> Throw that in there without any good reason? Is there some secret pro-porn legislation proposed by Chuck Schumer that I'm not aware of? Because he definitely lowers his glasses like a guy who's seeing porn for the very first time. Yowza, that is some pretty steamy stuff. Also, check out this graphic Sean Hannity put up on the screen. Why does Fox keep accidentally making Joe Biden look cooler than he actually is with their graph? I mean, last week, Tucker Carlson aired this badass graphic. <laughs> A Biden eating ice cream in front of a burning building, and now Hannity airs this. This looks like something you have up on the wall in your college dorm room. <laughs> so with the midterms looming, Republicans and Democrats have clearly settled on different strategies. Biden's trying to appeal to voters with policies that are overwhelmingly popular in polls, like reforming marijuana laws, while Republicans embrace Donald Trump, even as he rants about bowling alleys and Chinese restaurants, like a guy who's on heroin and LSD. <laughs> this has been A Closer Look. The midterm elections are coming up, so to make sure that you're good to vote in this election, visit our good friends at headcount.org to check your voter registration status or to register to vote.